Today on No Narrative Ravens Talk, we're going to take a look at the John Elway saga in Baltimore. John Elway was drafted number one by the Baltimore Colts in 1983. And in what was or what is the worst trade in the history of the NFL, the drunken buffoon on your screen, Bob Ursay, traded a franchise-changing quarterback, not only a franchise quarterback, but a franchise-changing quarterback, John Elway, to the Denver Broncos without notifying his general manager, nor consulting his general manager, for a center, Chris Hinton, a backup quarterback, Mark Herman, and one year's number one draft pick, the next year's 1984. We're going to show some of John Elway's comments and why he didn't want to come to Baltimore. It was because of the drunken buffoon on your screen. And we're going to focus mainly on game day, week two, 1983, and John Elway's visit to Baltimore, in which he received a very rude reception. It was just a matter of uh, what I, I had to do, what I thought was best for John Elway, and that the situation in Baltimore was not uh, better than the situation I had with baseball. So if I was going to trade him, it was going to be for the greatest trade in the history of pro football. They couldn't see me, but I could hear them. They were already talking about, look, we'll just leave here and go do what we want to do. And I, so I knew it was going to be difficult to keep them from trading him. Within days of the draft, Dan Reeves heard from Broncos owner Edgar Kaiser that the asking price for Elway had dropped. He said, Chris Hinton, he said, Mark Herman, and number one the next year. And, you know, I kept waiting to see what else it was. And he said, and I said, is that it? And he said, yeah, that's it. The deal was done, with the Colts GM and head coach kept out of the loop. I didn't find out about the trade until they broke into the NBA playoffs with a press conference. I called uh, Frank Cush, who was the head coach. I said, are you watching the NBA playoffs? He said, no. I said, you better put them on because they just traded your quarterback. So that's how we found out. Ernie Corsi insists, and I've seen many interviews with him in which he has said this, that had the Colts been patient and held out, John Elway would have reported to camp for the Baltimore Colts. Though being the speculation of the general manager of the Baltimore Colts at the time, we will never know if John Elway would have reported to the Baltimore Colts and possibly have saved that franchise because the Colts were run by this drunken buffoon, Bob Ursett. And now let's take a look at some scenes from John Elway's visit to an extremely hostile and hot Baltimore's Memorial Stadium on week two of the 1983 NFL season. For John Elway, the baptism of fire in Pittsburgh was nothing compared to the hazing that awaited him in Baltimore. Good afternoon from Memorial Stadium in Baltimore. Bob Martin and Sandy Clough. It's 100 degrees here right now, but that's nothing compared to the temperature in the stands where 50,000 fans have come to boo John Elway. With his elbows still sore from the pounding in Pittsburgh, Elway faced the Colts who weren't about to let him in. He said they never came to Baltimore because we're going to give them the blues. For Elway, it was deja vu as injuries again relegated him to the sideline. Derek Hatchett. And 
it for Steve Watson. Well, nothing like getting rid of the cobweb. That baby was a perfect spiral. I didn't think the defensive back could drop it. And a look at the uh, Baltimore defensive unit. Steve Parker replacing Jose Taylor, which is a surprise. Taylor played well last week. The linebackers, Graceland Cook, one of last week's big heroes, Kraut, and Vernon Maxwell, who was outstanding. And there's the uh, Baltimore secondary. This team is both their whole personality surrounds their linebackers. Are. Nathan Poole has come on, wearing number 34. In the backfield with Sammy Wider. Poole coming off his best day as a pro. And this is Wider on the flat. Boy, is this crowd alive. Vernon Maxwell on the tackle. So the pickup by Wider. And now Frank Cush goes to the uh, nickel defense. The nickel back Kendall Williams has come on, replacing the linebacker Barry Kraut. Denver with the extra wide receiver, rookie Clint Sampson joining Rick Upshur and Steve Watson. Third down, seven. At the 27. Penalty marker down. And Elway, let's see, a battle between Larry Anderson of Baltimore. However, Elway may have <laughs> crossed the line of scrimmage. No, I'll tell you what happened. The left, the left tackle was in motion before the ball was snapped. So it's going to be five yards against the Broncos, but what a fine play by the receiver. I'll tell you, that was actually an end-over-end -end job. It's very hot, the ball's very slippery, and that, that may happen more than once today. Larry Anderson in a wrestling match with Rick Upchurch. Elway very close to the line of three. for the uh, false start. He is the left tackle. That could also happen quite a bit, Mark, just due to the fact that you cannot hear your quarterback. And Dan Reyes was talking last night to me about the importance of away from home hearing your quarterback talk. They may have to get a microphone in there to help the quarterback. I think it's a good suggestion. Third down at 12. In fact, Steve the bird does wear the uh, amplifier because he has a problem with his uh, throat. This is Winder. Sandy Winder the first down, wrestled down by Kim Anderson. Anderson and James Burroughs makes the stop. This crowd is charged up as the Baltimore Colts have stopped Elway and the Broncos in their first drive by Wilson. And once again, John Elway hears it from the crowd. The feeling was last week that uh, Elway may have been aiming the ball, may have been very, very tight. I understand what you're saying, where he's trying to make sure that he's throwing the ball where he wants to throw it. You can't do it. He's got as fine a natural motion as he's ever been in this game. He can do things that a lot of players have never been able to do. But hey, you don't just walk in and take over this game. This is the best in the world. That roar, reading the announcement that the uh, Orioles are in front of the Yankees, that the roar was not for Elwood. <laughs> First down at the 34-yard line. Off the delay, this is Rick Paros. Up one, Barry Krauss, inside linebacker on the right, was all over Rick Paris, who had a rough one last week. They really haven't had any five guys together, so their coordination's been off, and this isn't a good group to be off with. Second down and nine. Leiter and Paris are the running backs. Whoa. Upchurch, not able to hang on. John's pressing a little, I'll tell you that, Marvin. If you had a chance to see him after he threw that ball, it was a high throw. What you do when you're a little anxious is throw the ball high. It's no different than in baseball. Pitcher does the same thing. Elway has up Kirk and Watson as his wide bat, third down and nine. picked up. It allowed Elway to jump up in the pocket, but Wisniewski jumped in, 
and just made a fine a fine recovery to pull John down rather than allowing him about a 12-yard gain. So you can see Baltimore's defense is cranked up, and uh, that was expected. Over Green Bay, they were in a shootout today, so Green Bay putting points up. Pittsburgh winning at 25-21. And Buffalo gets into the win column. Cincinnati having a very difficult time. They did not have it together. Dallas putting big over St. Louis in the fourth quarter. Off the 65-yard punt. A rough situation again for John Elway, who is 0 for 2 thus far this afternoon. And Winder on the fumble. And Elway covers up. But we'll have to take another look at that handoff. close look. John takes the ball. Sometimes it's the way you give the ball on the handoff. Went right through Winder's hands. He never got his hands on it. That was on the back. Sometimes it's on the quarterback if he doesn't get it there, but that time Winder just tried to grab it, let it go underneath. That's his fumble. John made a good heads up play to keep the ball. Had a defense from the crowd. What the fans here in Baltimore would love to see would be Elway yanked eventually by Dan Reeves. And things continue going the way uh, pretty well. Now he's a little delay a game. That'll cost him about a foot. That's not a big problem. What is the problem is they don't have good field position. Baltimore's a young team, has everything going their way, and he's got to climb out of a hole. By the final score, the Giants in overtime. Over Atlanta, 16-13. Washington beating Philadelphia, so the Skins bouncing back from their loss to the uh, Dallas Cowboys. Cleveland over Detroit in the fourth quarter. That's a good time to have a big game for Sam because they've had a little trouble. Chicago defeating Tampa Bay. Second down. Still about 19. Out to the five is Sammy Winder. The Colts with a 3 nothing lead on a 33-yard field goal by Raul Allegre. Sammy Winder, who had a superb game against Pittsburgh, his best game ever in the NFL. It was last Sunday, and he comes off of a solid rookie year, alternating with Dave Preston and uh, Gerald Wilhite. He and Wilhite in a battle during training camp. Wilhite on injured reserve, out with a hamstring. And that is a big loss for Denver because he was a, he was a multi-dimensional type back. He was an excellent pass receiver, and that's what a guy needs, particularly if you're an Elway. For now, third down and uh, 14, and uh, looking to talk it over. I saw an indication for a timeout with three minutes and 44 seconds remaining in this first quarter. Short timeout, Denver. Short timeout, Denver. So they did call for the time. Looks to be some confusion there, John. There is some confusion, and it happens a lot of the time. Listen, this isn't the first time that Denver's ever been confused. You know, they've been sending in plays with Dan Reeves. It's not what he's always used to. He caused that foul up, in my opinion. I mean, uh, that's just part of the deal, and I don't think anybody that plays uh, takes it very seriously. And Frank Cush has his way, and everybody knows it now, and he's doing all right. We'll get back to that point a little bit later on. Third down and 14 for Elway and the Broncos. The intended receiver covered by Vernon Maxwell, and still the next pass completed by Elway will be his first. That's okay. He did all he can do from his position in a difficult... He put this ball the only place it could be thrown, and if Winder hangs onto the ball on the dead run, as he should, he runs it right down the field to about midfield. Well done by Elway, but uh, takes 11. Look at how hot that is. Does that make you feel better, John? <laughs> I'll tell you what, I feel pretty good, but 102 might... That'll test you down on the field. That means it's got to be at least 110, 115. Play there. Bracelet. Originally a draft pick of the Denver Broncos. Right. Again, Rick Paris, as Elway, went to the ground, and uh, that Baltimore defense, very aggressive. But that'll be marked where Paris' forward progress was stopped. But the crowd loves it. They wouldn't let him fall. Sometimes you can't get to the ground. 
Yeah. Hey, now I, you know it's those those little those little passes to the outside. That they've got eight people in tight. They're not going to let they're not going to let Denver run the ball inside. Harris did pick up two. It's a third down and nine. The ball spotted at the 35-yard line. We've heard a lot about Rich Carlos. I think he may get his chance to kick a field goal because if they if they can just move it four or five yards, they've got it inside a 50-yarder. And for rushing for only 14 yards on 10 carries. And Elway out of a shotgun. Now the play is whistled. Some angry Broncos and Colts bumping each other. another too much time and that's one of the one of the problems with calling them from the sideline and then on top of that the crowd noise it's it's been tough but it just keeps the confusion level very high delay of game offense still third down so another delay of game penalty against the broncos big five yards i mean carlos still had a chance to kick it even to 51 yards from there but now they've got to pick up a completed pass 14 for, for first down. And the Broncos looking to do it right in the infield area of the baseball configuration here at Memorial Stadium. Steve Watson hasn't had a ball thrown his way. Always stepping up and overthrows. He was trying to get Watson. Greg Bracelet got a piece of it. To the Baltimore defensive effort as the Bronco drive has been stopped. So often happens on reverse flow plays. Number 95 led the defensive charge for Baltimore. I don't know if they've got. This would not be the last time that Baltimore enacted revenge upon John Elway, as you can see on your screen. The Mile High Miracle When John Elway was de facto general manager of the Denver Broncos in 2012, the Baltimore Ravens went into Denver and beat John Elway's Denver Broncos on their way to winning a Super Bowl championship, their second since coming to Baltimore in 1996. So, in a way, John, we thank you for not coming to Baltimore and salvaging a team that would have been run by Bob Ursay and his son, Jim Ursay. <laughs>